You know, we spend a lot of time here in the floor of the Senate talking about how our states are different. Uh, that happens in the House of Representatives where I served as well. But there's one thing that certainly unites all of our states and frankly, one thing that unites all of the front desks of our Senate offices, and that is this. We have been all flooded with phone calls from the thousands upon thousands of constituents in each one of our districts who are furious that they are going to get no increase in Social Security at the beginning of next year, despite the fact that prices for virtually everything that fixed income seniors are paying for going up, they're getting absolutely nothing to try to compensate them for those cost of living increases. And so we're hearing from people like Kevin in Bridgeport who said, Dear Senator Murphy, I'm a lifelong resident of Bridgeport. I'm 63 years old. I'm living on SSDI due to a rare disease of the spinal cord. And since my only source of income is SSDI, I am concerned about the recent announcement that there is going to be no COLA increase for 2016. If there is anything you can do to reverse this decision, millions of Americans like me will be greatly helped and greatly appreciative. Or Fred from Wilkett, who said, I understand that the lower gas prices have kept the CPI lower, with the result being no Social Security increase for 2016. But many of us do not drive or drive a limited amount, and the lower gas prices do not place additional funds in our pocket. Meanwhile, the cost of beef, chicken, eggs, and milk, the things we live on, have risen and have reduced our purchasing power. Many of us have no other form of income. Or Adeline in New Fairfield, Connecticut, who says, my husband and I were very disappointed that we did not receive, will not receive a cost of living raise in our check. Please let this be the last time. With all the medical deductibles and food and clothing and taxes all going up, it just gets discouraging. We are up in age and not the best of health. And because of that, we are unable to get a job. Social Security is what we depend on. So these stories can be multiplied millions of times over in all of our districts. And what are we going to do about it? Are we just going to sit here as we do with issue after issue and offer no response to the millions of our constituents who are telling us that they're going to have trouble making ends meet? Or are we going to make a choice? Are we going to make a choice to end an unjustifiable loophole that allows corporations to hand over millions of dollars to their CEOs virtually tax-free, or are we going to invest in the millions of seniors and disabled across this country who are going to have a hard time living, making ends meet, if we don't make the change involved in the piece of legislation that we're announcing today. The, Save Benefits Act is going to save the lives of seniors who, without a cost of living increase, are going to have trouble affording medication and food. And it really comes at no cost to the corporations that are right now receiving an unjustifiable tax benefit, one that Congress really never intended. You know, Congress passed and has ex accepted as part of our tax law for 20 years this provision that doesn't allow companies to take a tax benefit for incomes over, for salaries over a million dollars. Not surprising that companies found a way around that provision because it exempted performance-based pay. So bonuses and stock options could be handed out without, with a full tax benefit. And that became the standard for compensation packages. All of a sudden, it wasn't about salary any longer, and it became about this performance-based pay. And so you live in a world today in which there's this perverse system. The more corporations pay their CEOs, the lower their tax bill. It's not going to hurt corporations to simply have to pay taxes on the bonuses above a million dollars that they send to their CEOs and big executives, they're going to continue paying their CEOs a lot of money. A lot of them live in Connecticut. I don't have any fear that there's going to be a rapid diminution in the amount of money that CEOs are making, but at least those companies will pay taxes uh, on those exorbitant salaries. And we'll be able to use that money to make sure that their customers <laughs> The people that are buying the goods that these big companies make actually have the purchasing power 
with which to enter and be active in the economy. And I guess that's the, uh, the, the, the piece of economics that I'll end on here. By putting $50 more a month into the hands of frail, poor, seniors, and disabled, you are providing an enormous economic benefit to the economy because all of that money is going to go into the economy. Let me tell you what a senior living at or below the poverty line is going to do with $50 a month. They're going to put it into food. They're going to put it into medicine. They're going to put it into Main Street businesses. And the fact is, is that when you instead decide to subsidize salaries of above a million dollars, that money isn't going back into the Main Street economy. Maybe a portion of it is, but a lot of it is ending up just in giant accrued pensions and savings account or in offshore investments, not in Main Street economies. So this is not just the right thing to do for these seniors that are crying out to every single one of our offices to do something about this unjustifiable uh, lack of a COLA, but it's the right thing to do for the economy writ large because the money is going to find its way uh, into all sorts of crevices and corners of this economy that badly need that kind of infusion. So I thank Senator Warren for introducing this legislation. I just wanted to come down to the floor to lend my voice to it and for it uh, on behalf of the hundreds and hundreds of seniors in Connecticut that are contacting and calling our office asking for the Senate to do something. With that, uh, let me yield to my colleague uh, and friend from Connecticut, Senator Blumenthal.